what's going on people this is Jay Ghost, and today I am going over a article in regards to pirate radio youtubers and video games now this is on um, mr. Kelly's website at TechCrunch there will be a link in the underbar for you and for the most part this is talking about the very new dichotomy that is coming up between youtubers and what I'm gonna put in air quotes gaming journalists um, gaming journalists happen to be people like um, Escapist, Movie Bob, and all of these people that have kind of been part of the older generation of gaming. However, the newer ones that are coming up are the ones that are playing the games, showing these games, presenting them, and usually have some type of affiliate channel that basically does um, allows people to see not only reactions to the games but also to um, have comedic shows and everything else now youtuber youtubing has been gaining momentum for quite some time um, I believe it started in 2009 2010 that's when it actually started getting bigger and everybody knows about PewDiePie getting the four million dollars a year I'm gonna keep just move on you can actually see um, other videos about that I really don't care how much he's made is good for him but there are a lot of people that are doing this kind of more as a citizen journalism thing which is something that I'm going to be getting into later now um, the article goes into Total Biscuit as well as different types of um, game commentary and everything else which are actually doing pretty well and something that I noticed was when it was talking about Lee Alexander that kind of reminded me of Jim Sterling or Movie Bob well maybe not Movie Bob but Jim Sterling is at least playing doing let's plays of his games onto a separate channel so that way he makes more money now um, what was talking is that Mike Rose did um, ask from Gama Sutra if YouTubing was killing the gaming press. I don't think that is really the case, but there is a marked change in the landscape. You cannot be as deceitful or dishonest. That's something that I believe a lot of people are beginning to recognize because with Ubisoft, they got immediate backlash on everything that they did, such as the female protagonist, as well as going into the whole Watchdog um, Ultra Graphics routine, where they you had no demo that came out. That was one of the things that people wanted. They wanted that access to find out if this was a game that they would be able to play. Of course, top games draw major traffic, and big publishers want to pay advertising on on those sites for YouTube or whatever else. But that's starting to slowly get away from the entire, I guess you could say, website-centric model, which has been working for quite some time. But I believe that pretty soon, that's you're going to be seeing that change considerably. You won't be able to do um well maybe movie reviews you can do but the but a lot of big gaming sites like IGN escapist destructoid they're going to be um, facing a lot of competition from the youtubers and I believe there's already been some fallout for destructoid so that's something to always keep in mind in terms of the youtubing now I probably um, can do this for my on, my on myself because one of the things that I've done is that Capcom report and I do plan to do other reports not only for Nintendo and Squaresoft but other um, financial reports as more and more information comes up right around this time there should be more annual reports that's what I was waiting on to sit here and see and get more information and details and be accurate and up to date and possibly do a new one every year but that comes at a cost of time for me along with you know all of the economic details that I have to try to get right so what am I doing differently than say I don't know IGN who looks at the annual report and just basically parses out the information whereas I probably give a lot more information in a detailed format a little bit longer but if you were to um, write up that write out that they do, I'd probably be having more information while also trying to, you know, make it funny or whatever else. 
that's kind of what is going on here. The publishers are recognizing that YouTube is a force and people are beginning to find out that YouTube YouTubers are doing a lot more with a lot less. So you don't have to pay them as much, but if you have, if they have access to the information, they'll be more than happy to sit down and begin to build an audience because they want to have those types of communities. Now there's plenty of female gamers on, such as Lady Ash, and there are plenty of um, people that you can actually go to to find different aspects. Like, I mean, Review Tech USA, for all intents and purposes, he kind of does his thing of being a third party news site on YouTube. Um, you have Angry Joe who can do reviews. I don't agree with all of them, but that's another person that's on YouTube that is doing quite well, even though he's um, doing that through an affiliate program, which I don't plan to do for myself personally. Um, you also have Main Event, um, Black Creon, and plenty of other people that can do a lot in the YouTube gaming community that sit down and support a lot of different things in regards to not only journalism but trying to you know keep the community together now the publishers sometimes they kind of see this as pirate radio um, let's talk about that concept really quickly when you're talking about pirate radio you're actually talking about say the big guys are not quite understanding what's going on and one of the biggest people that does this is nintendo how does nintendo do that well the basic gist of what they do is they're trying to control what happens to what they consider their product now in the article it talks about say tabletop gaming if you were to record monopoly they want to sit here and say that they own that video which is considerably a stretch and that's something that's possibly going to be worked out um, through the court system or through the court of public opinion. I believe the court of public opinion is far more swift but it is something that should be addressed by changing copyright law so that it's more public friendly instead of publisher friendly because what's Nintendo going to do? If they have an advantage in the marketplace they're going to use that event advantage and it doesn't matter against who so that is something to keep in mind that is something to consider now they do have an affiliate program this is talked about but that affiliate program is actually horrible for a number of reasons and it's mainly as I've laid out um, other things that I've looked at in terms of the article is how in the world does Phil Fish relate well I'm not really going to be talking about Phil Fish because Phil Fish is irrelevant to me. Uh, Mojang is also someone that is trying to help, you know, record, do free promotion for Minecraft. He's already taking care of, you know, his financial situation by, I mean, in his own words, he got lucky. He got lucky on... Minecraft because a lot of people promoted it. It was ten dollars. It was an open beta and For the most part people got to do a lot of crazy stuff with it and as they did more and more things You know, he just kind of had it where he didn't really do anything except say okay You all do what you want Put it on your websites make money if you want to off of it, but just you know abide by the rules that's something that he's changed recently, but that is something to consider. Now, as I said, the publishers have way too much power. They want to sit here and maintain control. That's done through copyright law for a number of reasons. That's kind of why I want to touch on this topic. So that people can understand the piracy issues or the copyright issues that are going to come along with this video. For example, me, I like to use a lot of Capcom music, and I also like to use a lot of Capcom characters because I'm a big fan of the Phoenix Wright series. That's why I do this. That's why you see Raymond Shields or Justine Courtney or a lot of heart, but I always link to where you can find out the information so you can see the character and possibly get your own 
guess of why I put them there, what they represent in the videos that I make. I understand that Capcom has those videos, but if they were to try to come after me on those videos, it would pretty much um, hurt them as well as it hurt me and my channel. I'd actually have to start over and I don't feel like doing that with the with this particular channel. So that's something to consider. It's basically they want to feel that they owe they're entitled to money and I mean we've already done this dance with Nintendo that can change in the future but it is something to consider especially with um, that one guy that I didn't want to really mention he's trying to take money and say well I'm entitled to that money and people are basically going to tell him to screw you that's pretty much he's already hurt himself from that and people don't really understand if you try to use the content ID system if you hurt yourself if you make it so it's more difficult for people to not play your game they will move on and they will find other games to play while you're sitting here and you're wondering where your millions of dollars went but of course you know basically to give a too long didn't watch version of this the main gist of the argument is the fact that youtubers are becoming a force unto themselves they're slowly changing the media um, industry not only are they changing the me media industry but the fact is this is going to be hurting the quote-unquote gaming journalists who are already in a very very lucrative model and that model is going to be changed as more youtubers are getting more and more clicks and more and more views and people aren't going to be going to these sites with um, hawkish characters that are basically going to sensationalize their news so that's my take on it i'd love to hear if you all have anything else and i'll see you all next time